everyone, and welcome back to the Hazardous Artist Series, Episode 7, Why I Otter. See what I did there? Are you guys excited to finally be moving on to a new art piece? Not that the last six episodes weren't great, but I'm a girl who likes change. So I'm really happy that we are on a f new piece of artwork. I lost my train of thought there for a second. <laughs> if you guys are interested in the art process of the coloring, the highlighting, and the shadow, be sure to head on over to the first Hazardous Artist Episode 1 for all your artist needs. Artist viewer discretion is advised as it gets a little sketchy. So, today, I have a special treat for you guys. I will be discussing the horrifying process of inking, the tedious, most frustrating, and sometimes the most stressful part of the whole three-part process of how I do my artworks. But before I get into the inking itself, let me describe a little bit about the sketching process since, well, I don't have a video of that. So. The sketching I do is very rough. It's complete trash, to be honest, in an artist's point of view. Because there's no details, and most of the time it's just a, either a bunch of shapes, or it's just a bunch of haphazard lines. And I rarely put details into the sketch unless it's going to be my final piece. So this sketch that you see that I'm inking over is actually one of my better sketches. Um, but you can see that it's still a little rough around the edges. And I do this because most of my sketches turn out to be finished pieces on a digital work. So if I know I don't need... If I know that I'm going to finish it on a digital aspect, I'm not going to finish a sketch with all the details. Because normally how my brain works, I will do all the detailing in the inking process. And that's actually not the most frustrating thing about the inking. The most frustrating thing about inking is the fact that I have a shaky hand. And the program that I use is pretty good when it comes to that. But you have a stabilizer tool in your tool options, which I think all of the art programs out there do have something similar to help with people who do have shaky hands. And that's why I really love digital because then I don't have to worry too much about my squiggly lines and how they're not connecting correctly and how they don't look smooth or whatever. Because if I don't have it, my lines will look so squiggly. And, but another reason why inking is so tedious for me is because if I don't get a line right the first time, then I have to redo it. And this can take anywhere from 1 to 15 times, depending on how bad this line is and how much I'm trying to get it right. But there are so many things I hate about inking, but the great thing about inking in general for me, for my particular art style, is that it adds depth to my artwork. And it was a learned process, not for the technique of inking, so much as trying to find the right style of line art that comes with inking that I wanted to do for my particular style. Some people do it where they have no line art at all and they just color with, you know, they just color it in and, you know, they smooth out the edges, but some people will actually change the color of the line art to match the color of their artwork, and I've actually tried both of those techniques, and I did not particularly like them as much as I did when I just did black as my main source of line art. And it's different with every person. There's some people who can really rock the whole no line art technique. And some people who can really rock out the whole changing the line art color to match their artwork. 
I'm just not one of them. And so, I guess that counts for one part of the problem with inking. But inking gives me a chance to detail everything that the sketch didn't show. So for this particular piece, there wasn't really much in the way of details to add. And as you can see, I'm adjusting lines and everything. Because that's another thing between the sketch and then putting it up on the computer to ink is that you don't see any of the errors, or at least I don't. I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but when you sketch, you can't really see a mirror image of that picture unless you flip the page and hold it up into the light or hold up the sketch in front of a mirror, but I... I don't have time for that. Who does? <laughs> so, I do it digitally because there's a way for me to actually mirror that to show what my inaccuracies are at. And it's pretty easy on digital. When I do find inaccuracies, it can be pretty frustrating because now I have to adjust it correctly where it looks way more accurate or looks way more believable I guess because my artwork is never a hundred percent accurate and there's you could argue that no one's artwork is a hundred percent accurate but that's more on a objective versus subjective views on artwork and I'm okay with the fact that I'm not a hundred percent correct all the time we're all learning you know so you just have to take in elements that you know were mistakes and you try again. And that's all artwork is, well, like art in general is, is just trial and error, but you know, that's pretty much everything else in life is trial and error. So what I'm doing now, cause I pretty much finished the whole outline of the sea otter is that I'm just going back and readjusting the head because that was the biggest problem was that when you saw the mirror flipped image you notice that the I don't know if you guys saw it and I only do because when you're the artist and you look at your own artwork and you see a mistake it's there it's imprinted in your mind you never lose but the head versus the facial features were not in proportion to one another on the flip side so I'm just adjusting the head here. I'm adjusting the ear, and that's one of the reasons why um, inking can be tedious, but it can also be a lifesaver on digital works because you're able to go in and make these adjustments. Whereas if you're doing it traditionally, which I do both, you can't do that. There is no undo button in a traditional piece. So. I always do digital for this reason because I know I'm not perfect and my, you know, between my shaky hand and my temper, I guess, because I have one bad three-year-old size temper sometimes, digital is my go-to for this. It comes out cleaner, it comes out crisper, not to say that I don't like my traditional pieces, because I do, and I still do traditional commissions, but when it comes to clean and crisp, digital is my best friend. And that and the fact that I can use a stabilizer to help with the shaky hands when I'm inking. So, and that looks like it's really the end of that. I'm just adjusting the position of the actual otter itself. But yeah, that was the end of this video. I know it was a little short, you guys, and I apologize. But inking, depending on the piece itself, inking really doesn't take me that long. I think without, you know, speeding it up to god-awful speeds. Um, even without speeding it up, it was about 20 minutes. So if you guys like this video, then join me next week because next week I'll dive into the coloring and I can actually tell you stories, real life stories of wild sea otters that I have seen in my life. There's a couple of good ones I have. So with that, you guys, like this video, comment below, 
and share with everyone you know. And I will see you next week. But until then, dare to create. The pun of this episode is utterly terrible. Just utterly terrible.